Assalamualaikum dan uh, selamat kembali ke Fast TV. Jadi aku nak share sikit dengan apa aku punya conversation dengan GPT-4 Omni lah yang baru ni. So aku nak tahu uh, sebenarnya sama ada aku punya analisis aku ni yang betul ataupun tak betul lah. Jadi aku nak tanya apakah uh, strategi yang patut Proton ambil untuk dia punya kereta elektrik. Lepas ni kita akan buat untuk Prodo pula tapi kita mulakan dengan Proton. So aku tanya mula-mula sekali uh, apakah yang hang tahu mengenai Proton dan dia punya relationship dengan Jili so dia cerita lah establish bila semua dan apa sebagainya kemudian dia kata uh, ada beberapa benefit lah selepas Jili take over 49.9% this and that dan sebagainya so aku tanya lagi adakah relationship antara Proton dengan Jili ni bagus untuk Proton dan kalau kau kata bagus kenapa kau kata macam tu so dia kata the technological advancement dapat model canggih-canggih dapat X70 X50 dia kata improve manufacturing quality control financial turnaround global expansion R&D dan sebagainya so dia kata conclusion dia relationship with Jili has been transformative for Proton by bringing in technological expertise dan memang dapatlah produk-produk lebih baru dan cantiknya so kata while all that you said is true Proton is doing far less design and engineering work for their own model comment on that while the partnership with Geely has brought numerous benefits to Proton it's true that Proton's role in designing and engineering its own models has diminished dia pun tahu <laughs> Here are some considerations regarding this aspect to the reduc- reduce autonomy in design engineering dependence on Gili's platform limited originality impact on local expertise with much more of the design and engineering work being handled by Gili there may be fewer opportunities for Proton's local engineers and designers to develop their skills and contribute to new models ini kita dah nampak dah kawan-kawan dalam pun dah berasa dah benda ni so aku tak tahulah apa nak jadi sebenarnya dekat Proton punya R&D team sama ada dia orang rasa nak belah ke pergi kerja tempat lain ke yang more satisfying ke aku tak tahu tapi memang kebanyakan orang dah nampak lah kata tak best lah kalau macam ni kan lah. but I don't know what's going to happen in the future jadi kita balancing benefits with autonomy kita trade off lah boleh belajar daripada Gili collaborate strategic focus so dia kata conclusion where reduce role in design is notable downside dia kata ada overall benefit have significantly outweighed this drawback Proton, Proton has gained technological advancement financial stability and market success moving forward can strike uh, to balance between the benefit and uh, its ability to design its own product so dia kata as a result Proton now be more like an assembly operation for Geely rather than a proper manufacturer dia kata, the characterization dia kata is a valid concern heavy dependent on Geely, limited R&D impact implication, brand identity memang betul lah, brand identity sekarang kita tengok produk-produk tu kita tak kenal pun Proton punya ni, memang lah kita cerita tentang dia grill dan apa semua tapi actually it doesn't feel like a Proton product lah kita dah rasa macam produk-produk Geely lah but some people rasa okey lah sebab mungkin better quality ke apa ke better technology dan sebagainya economic skill and development kita kata the local automotive industry may see slower development of high level skills and capabilities tu yang sedih tu sebab Proton is a capacity builder automotive industry ni is a capacity builder tu sebab kenapa kita wujudkan automotive industry Proton's role as technological leader in Malaysia could diminish as it focus primarily on assembly strategic flexibility limited juga dia kata strategies for balance enhancing local R&D kena invest local R&D jugalah macam mana pun macam mana dia nak convince Jili nak bagi dia invest more on local R&D tak, itu terpulang kepada kebijaksanaan uh, pengurus-pengurus di Proton collaboration development project focus on customization semua benda-benda yang dia kata kena buat lah kan cerita so, while the partnership with Jili has to function more like a semi the overall benefit have significantly strengthened Proton's market position and financial stability which is absolutely accurate walaupun kita tak happy dengan kita kata Proton dah tak ada design produk sendiri dan maybe designer kita tak nak kerja tapi betul lah Proton punya market position is stronger now and dia punya financial stability is better uh, whether that is uh, something yang kita boleh push aside kita mungkin tak juga sebab kalau tak ada langsung Proton pun kena bankrupt kena tutup pun tak bagus juga so right now the leaders dekat Proton dia orang menghadapi satu masalah yang agak besar juga conundrum but like most people say masalah tu sebenarnya adalah opportunity so aku tanya given the current relationship between Proton and Geely and this way we're going to start to look at the opportunity lah what is the most likely scenario for Proton to move into the EV era so dia kata kena guna Geely punya produk lah kan pilih lah mana-mana satu kan lah Uh, market education and infra kena kerja dengan government dan sebagainya uh, pilih lah mana launch mana so dia kata most likely scenario for Proton to move to the EVRA involves a strategic and phase approach kena rely on Geely kena gunakan Geely punya platform dia boleh memberikan ruang kepada Proton lah untuk mengambil uh, kelebihan daripada teknologi yang ada pada Geely so aku cakap which Geely BV model looks most suitable for Proton and why 
dia bagi several suggestion lah Jili Geometry A saya pun ada sebut saya pun sebelum ni kata Jili Geometry A ni memang satu pilihan yang mungkin sesuai sebab dia compact sedan dan sebagainya budget conscious dan mesti design pun quite ok Geometry C is a crossover crossover tengah popular sekarang maybe this could be the one lah sebab dia versatile lah dengan, dengan setengah popular kan and, and M Grand EV and it's a little bit older kan? tapi proven track record betul ha, kita tengok kereta ni tu dah lama betul lah kereta ni tahun 2016 kita tengok first time ha, tak tahu yang M Grand baru ni ke ada ataupun dia sebut yang M Grand yang lama saya pun tak pasti yang mana satu yang dia sebut ni Zikr 01 yang ni memang saya rasa hmm, possible tapi macam mana nak position harga dia kan ha? ni untuk premium lah dia kata yang lain semua tu cerita affordable dan uh, semua sebut ada cerita affordable lah versatility, affordability affordable, yang ni tak ada ni cerita tentang technology showcase lah so limited market lah geometry E ni uh, kereta kecil lah kan nak pusing-pusing bandar dan sebagainya so dia kata A dengan C lah particularly suitable uh, M Grand ok juga tapi mungkin dah, dah lama sikit lah kalau Zika 01 untuk establish Proton punya like brand kat situ kan lah geometry E untuk memang local lah I mean maksudnya Uh, short drive dan sebagainya tu saya tanya what strategy should Proton employ for the BEV transition and why kata leverage and Gili uh, punya expertise focus on key market segment pilih kena pilih segment mana yang paling sesuai sama ada compact ke affordable ke flagship model ke lepas tu, of course kena build local supply chain lepas tu, of course kena invest in R&D lah banyak mana R&D kita boleh buat untuk local kan sebab Malaysia punya situation ialah kita climate dia yang tropical, kata istiwa yang panas dan lembab. So ada banyak sebenarnya keupayaan engineering kat Malaysia ni untuk make make sure that EV kumpulan jili tu boleh beroperasi dekat negara-negara kata istiwa yang mana lembab yang dikenali sebagai satu keadaan yang susah untuk seal uh, electronic punya gadgetry dan electronic equipment. Banyak kereta-kereta daripada Europe gagal kat sini sebab dia tak ada testing in humid condition. So aku kata given that the new technology then it's a new technology that Proton has to learn how to cope with it and after sales should they aim for volume models or low, low volume premium models so, kita, given that Proton is centering a new technology domain BEV and needs to build competency should aim for low volume model yang premium eh? so dia cerita lah sebab, sebab, sebab of course lah kena low volume dulu lah sebagai nak boleh dia punya after sales punya team boleh biasa boleh cope dan sebagainya So of course resource management, market readiness, changing infra, blah 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 blah. Nis mana kena make sure lah, you plan plan build up your volume. So kita conclusion by starting with low volume premium model, Proton can manage the transition. So kita what good price range then? Ah, dia kata of course kena consider market uh, segment and positioning lah. Dia kata kan, ah, cost of production pun kena kira aja. Competitive landscape juga dia kata banyak ni kat sini Nissan Leaf, Hyundai Kona, Electric, MGZ SUV dan sebagainya. Sebab yang itu semua model model yang SUV dia kata berapa yang orang sanggup bayar so dia recommend dia kata harga betul 150 hingga 180000 so dia kata setting the price of Proton first BEV between 150 and 80000 balances the need for premium positioning market competitiveness and consumer appeal cuma sekarang kat sini kalau dia harga ni dah nama sama macam apa entry level untuk smart lah on the top end tu do you think that the Proton brand can bear that price range? Dia kata, given Proton's current market position and brand perception, it's important to carefully consider whether the Proton brand can support the price range uh, for its first BEV. Here's an analysis. Dia kata, current brand perception, affordable, reliable. Recent improvement dengan Geely ada improve sikit lah perception in terms of uh, success tu. Proton sekarang boleh produce high quality, feature-rich vehicles selepas X70 dengan X50 premium pricing. Memang significant shift lah ha, Kena betul-betul position nak pastikan paket boleh terima Kena build customer confidence ha. So Proton sekarang banyak cakap pasal quality Hari itu pun kita pergi ke kilang Proton di Tanjung Malim Dia bercerita tentang quality Bercerita tentang macam mana dia orang tengah improve Dia punya number of uh, uh, mistakes in the factory Ataupun defects yang dia orang try to sort up within the factory So that tak ada keluar Dan dia orang testing macam mana All the procedure dia datang cerita dan kita Macam-macam lah dia cerita Dan of course dia very serious sebab dia tahu Dia nak kena move move on and get even more consumer confidence sebab tu uh, strategi to support the price change kena le leverage on Geely punya reputation Geely ada macam-macam produk eh? smart so which is a good a good step lah itu dia ambil smart tu uh, Geely also ada high end punya produk like Polestar, Volvo dan sebagainya tapi untuk Proton smart tu was I think the correct decision kalau dia pilih uh, model ataupun jenama yang terlalu canggih pun takut master tak boleh carry so nampaknya jenama smart ni 
pun boleh lah kind of reasonable it's, it's tough for them uh, because banyak produk-produk daripada China masuk dengan harga yang lebih competitive but they're doing I think fairly decent job lah in trying to cope with the very tough market conditions sekarang kena belajar macam mana nak nak project this premium branding in a market where mungkin price has become uh, really the real factor because there's a price war in EV sekarang uh, among Tesla dengan the Chinese EV makers so Uh, target market dia early doctors and tech enthusiasts and eco-conscious buyers kita, kita kena carilah leverage incentive apa lagi kan extra yang boleh dapat lepas tu nak cerita price range justification tu sebab kereta ni canggih dan sebagainya conclusion dia kata price range of 150-180 memang tinggi lah untuk Proton tapi boleh buat lah dengan beberapa strategi yang seperti yang dia sebut tadi so aku tanya bila Proton patut introduce dia punya first BEV dia kata timing tu penting lah kan optimal timing tu penting lah dia kata So market readiness dia kata market dah ready ke belum kena tengok lah kan macam mana kat Malaysia charging infra macam mana internal readiness macam mana after sale dah ok supply chain dah ok competitive landscape macam mana first mover ke nak tunggu market mature dulu competitive analysis macam mana market sekarang apa cerita dia orang lain nak launching masa bila dan macam mana dia kena recommended early 2025 is strategically sound period for Proton to introduce the first BEV memang kita dengar Proton nak launching dia punya BEV tahun 2025 so tahun dah betul lah cuma dia kata early 2025 early atau late kita tak pasti tapi Proton dah sebut 2025 kita infra growth by early 2025 the ongoing development of charging infra to be slightly to be more robust uh, addressing one of the key barriers I think right now dah memang ada sikit lah pembangunan tu dah ada nampak tapi I don't know whether cukup ke tak cukup by 2025 capai ke tak capai government punya target of 1000 uh, apa nak DC fast charger tapi ada ada development and uh, kita kata of course government policy tu memang bagus lah kan uh, nak kena build brand dan sebagainya internal supply chain ready ke tidak EV technology advancement kata by early 2025 further advancement in battery technology and overall EV efficiency are expected allowing Proton to offer competitive and technology advanced product kadang-kadang kena tunggu lambat sikit pun tak apa because then the product pricing memang lebih cantik so you can offer more features dan sebagainya cost reduction dia kata investment in scaling EV technology will likely reduce cost around Proton to price its EV competitively so timing tu aku rasa 2025 tu betul dah kenapa aku rasa 2025 betul lah kata tu sembang lagi sekali Given current market conditions in Malaysia and global trends in EV sales and tech development, when do you think EV will hit inflection point in terms of total industry volume? Kita inflection point uh, in total is the most when uh, is is when the moment when EV adoption accelerates rapidly and becomes significant portion of overall vehicle sales. Based on current market conditions and global trends in EV sales and technology development, the inflection point can be anticipated to between five to ten years. Here's a detailed analysis. So, dia ceritalah global EV growth macam mana 2023 EV uh, global sale is 10% uh, battery tengah bagus economy is of scale makin banyak kilang kereta buat EV government policy pun banyak bagus infra development pun agak ok uh, Malaysian government policy pun ada uh, Malaysian low carbon uh, mobility blueprint tu pun dah nampak lah bayang-bayang macam mana kita nak pergi ada growing interest early adoption dan sebagainya projection projected inflection point dia kata 2030 dia kata why cumulative effect of policies and incentive dia kata dah semua ni boleh jadi berlaku 2030 itulah akan hit inflection point so what proportion of the market must be EV command before we consider as reach inflection point katanya apa dia inflection point tu berapa 15 to 20% The reason for 15 to 20% this is normal kita memang tengok dalam mana-mana pun kita tengok technology adoption curve 15 to 20% is where inflection point happens kadang-kadang rendah sikit kadang-kadang tinggi sikit but typically between 15 to 20% semua cerita dia bila sampai 15 to 20% tu macam-macam benda berlaku lah economy soft scale macam-macam benda berlaku so earlier you said Malaysia will hit inflection point around 15 to 20% 2030 when do you think you'll hit 10% TIV because 10% TIV ni pada aku ialah satu yang penting sangat sebab ia akan menunjukkan kita dah lebih serius kita dah masuk double digit eh untuk kita sudah TIV so dia kata reaching 10% is a significant milestone on the path to achieving which is, which is why I, I, I always want to monitor the 10% tu it is reasonable to project that Malaysia could reach 10% TIV around 2027 aku selalu cakap 2027 paling lambat 2028 dia pun setuju 2027 uh, kita kenapa influencing supportive policies again dia ulang benda yang sama juga dah 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 dia projection around 2027 so incremental growth so it's not too fast nak kena tengok 2027 2028 tu tak too fast 2026 tu kalau awal lah penghujung 2026 supportive ecosystem uh, so dia kata based on the current market global trends it's going to be around 20 27 10% TIV and that's why tadi proton kena launch kereta dia at 
2025 so that it's ready to catch the wave before the wave arrives. 2025 too will give Proton time to learn the market, learn the technology and have a proper product yang lebih affordable maybe 2027, 2028 just before the betul-betul inflection point wave to arrive. So this is the first product yang kena masuk untuk prepare for the incoming EV betul-betul. Jadi a serious uh, volume seller. It could be faster, it could happen earlier or it could happen a little bit later but I don't think 2030 it will be later than 2030 untuk hit 15 to 20 percent and I don't think it's going to be later than 2027, 2028 untuk it hits 10 percent. Okay, sampai sejauh cerita kita hari ni. Kalau anda suka, tekan butang like dan kongsi dengan kawan-kawan. Kalau -kawan. anda suka, tak aku punya conversation dengan chat GPT ni. Aku akan ada another conversation dengan dia pasal Pro 2 pula kita tengok apakah dia punya jawapan-jawapan dia dari segi price range kat mana nak position all these early products the reason why aku share lah kerana aku nampak dia punya reasoning dia sama macam aku punya reasoning aku rasa dia kena premium dan sebagainya sampai suka tak dia punya pendapat setuju dengan aku komen kat bawah banyak-banyak dan kalau boleh tekan butang like dan kongsi dengan kawan-kawan pemandu Malaysia pun yang berhemah kita jumpa lagi insyaAllah